talk about it. But now we're going to actually do a team review of a shoe. And today is kind of a fun one. It's in the super shoe realm. We're going to be talking about the Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro 2. Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro 2. As David holds up the Alpha Fly. <laughs> that is not what we're talking about. We're talking about the Adios Pro 2. Um, this is a, a unique offering and we're going to talk about why that is but before we dive into talking about the shoe and our experience matt do you want to give us the specs for this shoe yeah so we'll talk about we're talking about version two specifically so for men's size nine it's it's unisex sizing by the way so there's an it's eight point ounces for men's size nine um my size 10 came in at eight and a half ounces and then the stack height well, yeah Matt, what did you, you said 8 point ounces. 8.0, 8, <laughs> 8 ounces, sorry. 8 <laughs> ounces uh, for men's size 9. Um, the stack height is 39, is it 39, point, 39, uh, 39 millimeters in the heel and 30.5 millimeters in the forefoot, so 8.5 millimeter drop. How specific that is, right, it could vary a little bit depending on how you're loading and some other mechanical stuff. But, yeah, and this is a classic carbon you know, carbon rotted in this case, carbon infused rotted super shoe in terms of its classification. Awesome. We're going to dive into more of the specifics of the midsole and kind of its construction later. But first, let's just talk about fit. Um, this uses that kind of like that updated cellar mesh type upper. Um, tell, tell me about what you guys experienced with fit with this guy. I think overall, it's pretty good. The shoe does seem to run a little bit on the long side for me. Um, I think you could justify a half size down. I think you could do that with a lot of the Adidas performance models. Uh, however, they do their last and their upper, like with the cellar mesh, they always seem to run a little bit on the long side for me when they're true to size. Um, I think it locks down relatively well, though. I had no problems in the midfoot. There's plenty of space in the forefoot. For me, the heel collar did have a little bit of instability in here, not, not, or just, just translation. So if you notice, I switched it up to the last eyelet instead of that one to just try and like really pull it a little bit more and just make sure my heel is on the platform. Which way um, was your heel going? Ooh, that's a good question. Because I haven't actually run in this shoe in a little bit. I've run in it plenty. It's just was it, or it was it more when you were moving specific. or just standing? Both. Okay. Walking slash running, I guess yeah. more and more in motion. But um, I would notice that it would kind of just shift a little bit. So I would have to just lace it down really tight, and I would feel the same thing a little bit just underneath the tongue, like right in here. Like I'd almost have a little bit of movement there, as if maybe there's a little too much volume going in the vertical direction in that region. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but um, I did find I had to lock it down a little bit. Other than that though, the cellar mesh upper is pretty solid. It's, it's, I mean, it's translucent. It's like almost non-existent. This thing is pretty darn light on the upper. Yeah, it is. Minimal overlay, minimal overlays. And it's overall, it's pretty dang good. For me, it's just kind of the heel stuff. Um, and I have heard that from a couple of other people as well. Yeah, I'll I'll build off of yours, David, because I think we had some similar experiences. I would say of some of the the you know super shoe marathon racing options, this is a roomier option. Also, I have the sweetest colorway, this like blue green one. I just think it's I think it's fire. But um, but yeah, I think that there's some some real roominess, and it, and I had to use the last eyelid as well to really lock it in because I felt like my foot would actually like be, it was kind of pushed out laterally. That's why I asked you specifically, David. I didn't know if you had the exact same yeah. as me, but like, I felt like my foot was and kind of And it probably like, was. I, I, I just, I can't recall at this point. It's been a few weeks. Right. Maybe even more. So I don't know. I think that was one of those things where it just felt like I was moving that way. So I really had to lace down to feel secure. We'll talk about stability more later and why it's kind of a unique shoe in that realm too. But um yeah, the, the tongue is really thin and I liked, there's like minimal areas of padding just to like protect your the top of your foot from the laces. And I thought that was effective. And um, I felt pretty locked in in the heel, but I agree with with David that you could probably get away. If you're, if you're a tweener and going down would probably be what I would choose. 
when going with this shoe, um, just from a fit perspective. What about you, Matt? Um, I had a similar experience where fit, while well, it was really good, I did, this is one of the rare cases I had to really lock the laces down in the midfoot, especially like there's, there's lots of room in the forefoot. The midfoot has a good amount of room, but the laces respond really, really well here. So I have cinched that down. But I also, when I'm doing workout and stuff, light, like a little more snug fit in the midfoot. Um, not on my right side, on my left side, I got a little bit of heel slippage. So on both, I lace locked um, the the laces at the very last eyelet. And that, that solved the problem. But I agree that it fits. For me, it's... I've had a different experience with some other Adidas shoes, but this one is when I personally stayed true to size in. And I think... There is a teeny bit more room, but I found that over longer workouts, I've really appreciated that, um, and it accommodates swelling well. But this upper, I mean, I I love this. It's a little crinkly on foot when you first put it on, but then as as your the long mileage, I really forget this is here. So lace locking it is definitely suggested. There is a little bit more volume than I think some people might expect, but I just yeah. like again, there is a teeny heel counter back here, but for the most part, there's not really much of one. So. I do really well in this, this, uh, type of upper. Sweet. Yeah. And I think maybe hopefully for clarity's sake, I think all of us would say like, if you had to choose, this is true to size, but if yeah. you were like really wanting something more snug, like really snug and locked down, you might get away with half size down, but we'd all say this is a true to size yeah. kind of racer that you got here. So this shoe has some pretty unique aspects to it. So I'm going to dive into those and we're going to talk about how they affect ride and stability. And so some of those include, first, let's just talk about the midsole, I guess. So it's Light Strike Pro midsole, which they haven't really talked much or released what that really is. Um, but then, you know, you look at your geometry, you have a very heavy lateral, posterior lateral bevel. You have a full cutout of part of the midfoot, not the entire thing, but just on the inside or medial side of the midfoot, you have kind of a classic toe spring that you're seeing in these plated shoes. And then instead of a full carbon plate, you have carbon infused rods um, that, that span from the heel uh, up to the forefoot in the heel, you have the carbon plate that sits back there. And so, you know, between, you know, this cutout, the rods, kind of the very heavy lateral bias of this shoe. Um, talk about how that and the foam itself kind of interact to create this ride. Yeah, I mean, unique is definitely a word for it. Um, that posterior lateral bevel is pretty sharp. So if you're really sensitive to those, um, this may not be the shoe for you, but... I will say that completely changes dynamically as well. Everything about this shoe mm -hmm. is geared toward motion. And so, uh, I mean, you can take it away if you want to. It's no, no, right. running specifically. Walking in this shoe feels very awkward. So this is not a, this is not a walking shoe. This is running. So though, when you're walking around the first time, you're like, oh my gosh, this is so unstable. This doesn't feel good. And then as soon as you start running, that will change. So be patient. But yeah, that lateral bevel for anybody that's either like that has any stability issues that go this way, this is a no-no. For those of you like me that have some like issues with like controlling pronation, a little bit more medial motion, this actually with there's a plate in the rear foot kind of almost acts like an orthotic back here. So I actually at speed, it's it's very it's stable for me. Right. So it resists my motion going that way. So it actually works very well for my mechanics, but it may not work well for a lot of people that need general stability back here. Yeah, I would I would kind of just piggybacking off of that a little bit. I think when I was standing in this shoe for the first time, especially on my left foot, um, I have some minor differences there. But on my left foot, I almost felt like I was just going to fall off the platform. Like it just felt like I was my foot was going to slide off. I actually wish wished and actually still do wish that they just put like a sidewall on the, on the lateral side of the shoe. I think that would just make me feel less scared that I was going to fall off. I was thinking about people with very high arches and kind of more rigid supinated feet. Um, I don't think that this is, would be the best option for you. If you're someone in that category and have loved the shoe, you should tell me about it and why, because I would love to hear that. But um, just thinking about kind of the position of, of feet and if you're rigid in that position, it's already biased that way and that you're already biased that way. And so I, I would could see where that matchup 
might not be the best from if you're just going to be buying online and just taking a shot in the dark. Maybe this wouldn't be the one to take a shot in the dark with if you're in that category. Um, but I agree with Matt. Once I got running in this shoe, kind of that feeling of falling off went away, even on turning, which I was thankful for. Um, but I, I still was like conscious of the fact that like my peroneals, which are the muscles on the outside of the the shin, that they were kind of trying to like really stir up my foot and, and make sure I wasn't going laterally. And so I think just with the way my foot works and kind of how I run through the cycle a little bit more on the outside in general, it didn't work as well for me as some of the other options. Um, I still have more distance that I want to put on these, but that was kind of like some of those, um, the runs I've had so far. I just, I felt the lateral bias. It went away as I started running, felt even better as I went like faster, like casual pace didn't go great, but way when I dropped, when I dropped like half marathon pace and below, I felt good in them and they're, they're really enjoyable to run in at that point. Another, ex- yeah, and I th- another example of a shoe. I know I said this is not meant for walking. It's also really not meant for jogging. It's this is meant for picking up the pace. I think, David. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. I think it's important to remember that this is a speed day shoe. Everything about this is geared toward quick and fast transitions and making sure that you can get up and onto that forefoot, pop off, and reset. And so that bevel is really sharp, but when you're running faster, you kind of transition off it a little quicker anyways, and your load tends to shift a little bit more anteriorly, and you start to snap off that forefoot a little harder and a little quicker and snappier. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's also interesting to note, too, that there's a posterior lateral bevel and a medial cutout. Yes. I was just going to bring up the medial cutout. This is great. Keep going. Yeah. You would think that that would almost make you collapse inwards even faster and make this thing really unstable, but it actually doesn't really do that. You you transition really fast onto that midfoot, and then on the right over here on the cutout, there's even a little bit of outsole, and you almost have like a grabby sensation right there, and it almost like stops you in your tracks, puts you back onto that platform, and then it's up to you to just kind of push off and spring off the forefoot. So. When the pace pace picks up, it actually feels quite nice. I mean, it's a pretty fast transition through that region. You get up onto your forefoot, and then you're like, whoa, okay. Like, I'm moving. This this feels good. And especially, like, half marathon, marathon pace, if you're you're going max on those paces, I mean, it feels quite nice at those paces. Um, Totally. Even, like, 5K-ish paces, it still does quite well. I mean... If you look at all the Adidas athletes, I mean, they're paid to, but they're running road miles in this still. They're choosing this yeah. over the Takumi Sen. But now, but now that might change because there's the new Takumi Sen. Which I want to test that. Yeah, that, that might change. But, um, I mean, half marathon to marathon, this certainly is going to be a great option. Um, it's just got a couple of biases in there that might not make it work for certain people. But, yeah, everything about it is fast. Including the transitions on this shoe. Yeah. So. I think the medial cutout, <clears throat> like, we've been seeing that in other places um, from, like, development standpoints. And I, and I think that there's been considerations in my head about what that's going to do to the runner as you try to transition over a midfoot with a cutout. And I, I think one of the things that we can hypothesize that's going to be pretty sure fire is that when you take away surface area from uh, the bottom of the foot, you're going to have higher pressures in the areas that the foot does contact the ground. Um, But what I think that this shoe does well is that because of the medial cutout that it has, but the lateral bias that David talks about, like it kind of helps you avoid the potential of, of kind of like skipping over that as much because it kind of guides you along kind of the lateral part and then you then you transition into the kind of big toe after that so you you, i don't know that lateral bias and the lateral positioning of this entire shoe and even the way that the the lateral side you can there's kind of this um, indent on the outside of the shoe and you can even see where kind of the rods are within that that compresses a little bit easier so everything about this shoe just kind of like drives you slightly laterally through the midfoot and avoids that cutout. And so they have the cutout, it saves some weight, and it also is guided for you by the way that it's biased laterally with 
uh, with that bevel, but also, like I said, I think the compression where that, for the people who are watching, the compression here where, where, where it's kind of cut out on the lateral side um, allows it to compress a little bit easier and path of least resistance will be along the outside, kind of the bridge from the heel to the forefoot. Matt, anything else you've thought about with the with the cutout? Yeah, I when I first saw this shoe, I was terrified, and I was like, "This this cutout is not going to work." And I think because the what you guys have talked about with the way the if you do heel strike, this is going to really guide you laterally. Um, the rods also stiffen up the midfoot a lot, so I've actually never yeah. noticed the cutout. The only time I think you might notice this if you're running on trail, which I highly encourage you not to do. Um, I have taken some other shoes, uh, super shoes on trails. This is not one of them with the cutout. But I think even the way this is designed here, yeah, that one. Um, I think because this, cut, if this was cut out like this, this might be a very different story. But the fact that this comes down, I think that design, you get over this so quickly, you can take this out. And I didn't notice it. Um, I think Nathan brought up a great point with the way this compresses on this side is that I think people who land um, a little, anybody who's a midfoot or forefoot striker, this actually might work really, really well. Um, Wait, you have that color, you have that color too? Speaking of people that didn't like this shoe because it was too biasing them, I got this for $80 on eBay. So I have both colors. Oh my gosh. I was like, wait a minute. I thought you had the other colors. So now Matt has both colors. Yes, I wasn't going to, I didn't tell either of them that I also Nathan have. Nathan doesn't feel as special. Yeah, sorry, Nathan. <laughs> Oh, I was man. on eBay. I'm always looking for size <laughs> nine and a half and nine because Nathan, David, and Bach are size nine or nine and a half. So I'm always looking for extra stuff for them. And I found this. Somebody was selling it for like 80 bucks and it was mislabeled as a nine, nine and a half. And I was looking at the photos. I'm like, oh, that's a size 10. I'm like, oh, I, don't, I can't pass <laughs> this up. And so uh, thank you to whoever that was. Um, but if you ever see some weirdo on eBay trying to buy your stuff, if you have a size 10, that's probably me. Probably, man. Yeah. So just, but, a, just an eBay eBay scound, scoundrel, just I, like I am, just digging for stuff all yeah, day long. I love it. Well, um, let's let's I talk think, about one. Oh, go for you it. You want to say one more thing? The, the, I was say, let's transition to <laughs> let's transition to that was that's good. <laughs> let's let's move. Oh, wait, on. there's more. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's, let's transition on. to. We're the, gonna we're gonna talk about two more things. Um, the first one is you know. We just interviewed um, Dustin last week. He's been doing the uh, running economy testing. He is going to be, he's working on publishing a larger study. And then he also is doing a lot of case studies, posting stuff on Lab Rat Rundown on Instagram. And he did kind of a case study where he, in the same day, he tested the Audios Pro 2, the Vaporfly, and the Alpha Fly. Um, Vaporfly Next Percent 2 and the Alpha and the Alpha Fly. And he's been kind of posting his results, kind of looking at uh, how it works for him. You know, in this case, uh, oh, I had it pulled up and it's gone now. But here we go. I got it. So in this case, you know, he had a 1% running economy in, compared to control. He had a 1% running economy improvement with the Audios Pro 2. He had a 2.3% improvement with the Vaporfly 2 next percent too, and then a 3% improvement with the alpha fly. And I just want to hear your guys' thoughts on, you know, he's doing a lot of good work and he's, you know, crowd fundraising to be able to do some research with women specific stuff and with more kind of recreational paces, which is really fun for us all to learn. He's also posting some of his data um, from case studies. How do you guys interpret that? And how do you kind of think, we as just people watching his really cool stuff, how should we absorb his information? I'd like, I'd like to first shout out the, uh, the podcast YouTube video we did with him that I did with him last week, um, which was really informative. I encourage you to, to look at that. Um, I think there's some awesome, it's nice to actually have some numbers on that. Albeit the only limit, the limitation is it's with one person. So we know that different people are going to respond to different things. So he's responding really well to the alpha fly and the vapor fly, right? That's, that's him. We know that those, the zoom X foam tends to respond really, really well. Um, those P backs foams, the foam, the plate, the geometry, there's a lot of factors that go in. So I'd encourage people to take that data and then also look at themselves and go, am I like Dustin or do I have different mechanics? And the goal here should be, this is good data, but I also need to figure out how to optimize it for, 
me or somebody else. And so until we would, you know, we got to get a large group of subjects, which is really hard to do. Again, listen to the, the, the interview I did with him. And it was not easy to get. And people were some of the subjects that he had for the their large original study with t- like twelve people, which is not large, right? But it's great for this. People were large driving like this an, case. Yeah. yeah, they're driving like an hour and a half, two hours for the test. So, you know, it's awesome data to have. You just have to st- go. Does this apply to me? Are my mechanics similar? Am I the same population? So that's how you go. It's no different than reading a research study and going, you know, I'm reading this study because of either me or somebody else. Does the the subject population they're testing this on, is that me or not? Yeah, and I think I think something else to consider is he's looking at running economy as his main outcome measure, you know, and that's not the only important factor for most of us running marathons. Yes, do we all want to run faster? Totally. Are we kind of seeing that shoes can play a factor? It seems like that's the case. Um, so, you know, just having a shoe that makes you run faster doesn't mean it's going to keep you healthy. And so when and how you use shoes can be more gray than just looking at a case study and saying, hey, that one's faster for sure. So I'm just going to go with that one. So don't just think running economy, although that's a really fun part of running. Um, and we, you know, we love seeing the progression that he's bringing us through with some of this stuff. But just it's OK to get the shoe that's not the fastest one. That's totally fine because being healthy and enjoying what you run in and liking the feel of it and just having a good time. That's a whole other part of the the equation. Um, The other thing, Matt, you were talking about was like, do my mechanics work? And I think that's one of the questions I have. um, And I actually wanted to ask him a little bit more about is just what kind of, and maybe, I don't know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but just looking at what kind of biometric data, kinematic, kinetic data do we have and what can we actually pair yet with running economy changes? and shoe matching. So I think those things aren't known. So it's, it is just hard unless you have a cart to test this stuff, you know, and test yourself on each of these shoes and the money to buy all of them. It's it's a little bit of a crapshoot right now. You know, I think his bigger study helps a little bit uh, for generalizations, but anyway, David, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, a lot of what you guys said, I mean, anytime there's a research study like this, especially one that's as novel as this. I mean, there haven't really been any that have taken these shoes, put it across the platform, and then tried to directly compare them apples to apples. You have to kind of take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. And with running economy specifically, and he's talked about this multiple times, it is sub-maximal what we're looking at, this data. Yep. And he's looking purely at an aerobic metric, but there's so much other things that go into performance and not just running economy. And I think that's something that's really important for the consumer to take away from this. And yes, I mean, this is a lot of times you hear the phrase research is me search. Someone's going to go and study something that's really interesting and important to them. And in a lot of this, it's kind of his search for the shoe that works the best for him. And for him, he's an alpha fly responder, and there's there's nothing wrong with that. That like, that's just the shoe that seems to work the best for him. But there's so much different components, such as ground contact time, forefoot pressures, the transitions we were talking about earlier, like something on like an Audios Pro Two, or even just weight in general, because the alpha fly is heavier than all of the other shoes except for the Audios Pro Two, and they're about the same. And so in theory, the lighter shoe is going to be a little bit harder to, or a little bit easier to lift and won't cost as much energy at a sub-maximal workload. And so you kind of see a little bit of a bias in running economy that way as well, especially if you take it in a snapshot. But multiply that over 13 miles, multiply that over 21 miles, we have a much different picture. And so so much of this is going to be comfort driven. And I would just encourage the consumer it is data and it's out there and it's something I think worth looking at and talking about, yep. but please, please try the shoes on, give them a shot because just because it says it's 4.2%, if you even look on his data, it was 3.1% one day. It was like, you're going to have variance even on the same exact pair on the same exact person, depending on the day. That's been a fascinating so, part too. You're right. His, his yeah, variability. So, yep. Yeah. And so what? depending on the day, yeah. th- these things can change. And so find the shoe that works for you that you're comfortable being in. And if it feels good for you running fast, 
then just wear that shoe. Yeah. (laughs) If you like that shoe more than the other shoe, go with the one you like. Yep. Speaking of comparisons here, let's, let's talk about comparing the Audios Pro 2 to some of the kind of other shoes that people might consider. Alpha Fly, Vapor Fly, um, I think that, yeah, Hoka, Meta Speed Sky, and Endorphin Pro 2 Plus. So, yeah, what do you guys got? How do you compare it in terms of maybe like softness, bounciness, kind of, how, how would you, where, what would you compare it closest to? Where does it deviate the most? That kind of thing. Oh. Hold them up. So many. In ter- so I mean, many. That's a good question. What does it compare most? Because I feel like this is one of the, each one is so unique. Like the Audios Pro 2 to me is such a unique shoe already where, again, for me personally, when I'm at speed, it's one of the more stable ones for my mechanics just because of the lateral bevel and it's kind of the, the super, the forefoot is super stable. There's a ton of outsole flare here. So it works very well for me. It's not necessarily the fastest one for me. Like I think for me, the, the meta speed sky kind of wins on that. And these guys make fun of me for taking this on everything imaginable trail, etc. But it's just got such an interesting, aggressive um, ride that it's hard to really compare this. Um, it's, it, yeah, that's David, what do you think in terms of like finding something similar? I think, yeah, f- for me, I, I think I have to look beyond the ride cause they all have a, a unique aspect to their ride, but I, I look at it in terms of midsole, durometer, how much decompression you feel versus the responsiveness you get out. And this is in no particular order, but when I was holding up the shoes just now, this is kind of. As far as quote unquote bounciness goes, yes, this is I would my agree. spectrum. Yeah. So the least bouncy being the Endorphin Pro Plus, then the Audios Pro 2, then the Meta Speed Sky, then the Alpha Fly. And, and these ones are pretty comparable, to be honest. Like Flight Foam Turbo and Zoom X are actually pretty similar mm-hmm. on foot for me. How about compared um, to this one? And oh man, oh. that one I don't find very bouncy it's right. just soft rc elite too I, I agree so we're all the rc elite too. yeah it's, it's the, the softest one not necessarily the bounciest but again different so anyway yeah I totally agree yeah I, but i would say just in terms of durometer like light strike pro is interesting in the fact that there certainly is a softness and a bounciness to it but it doesn't quite deform as much as flight for flight foam turbo Blast. or zoom x yeah that you are no, Turbo. Turbo. Yeah. Turbo Blast? No, no Blast. No, it's Turbo. Oh, I've been writing that wrong. Dang it. Check your facts, son. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It is Turbo. Dang <laughs> just it. Just kidding. <laughs> but um, it's it's got a little bit of bounce back, but but not nearly as much as these. These feel like you're getting pushed. Yeah. yeah. Like this one, you don't get that in this shoe. You definitely get a little bit of a, a softness and a little bit of a bounce. And so if you're a little bit sensitive to that pushy feeling, but you like some forgiveness in the shoe and you still want a little bit of snappiness, it could be a good option. Whereas the Endorphin Pro Plus, there's not quite as much of that decompression. It's pretty much all that speed roll, right? which is great for some things and not so great for others for me personally. And I really like this shoe, and but it, it's, got its, it's got its place in the rotation for me. Um, but not nearly as much decompression, a lot more on the plate and geometry on this shoe. So, yeah, I, I actually loved your order and just to, to speak into preferences for me, I have a harder time with like Meta Seed Sky and some other ones closer to the Alpha Fly or even Vapor Fly that really you sink into that heel and kind of like trampoline off of it. I have a harder time. Like, I feel like I have to climb out more and some people don't have that sensation and that's where... Like that's why I chose the Endorphin Pro 2 for my marathon because I wasn't climbing out of anything because I wasn't sinking. And I would say that the Audios Pro 2, I was going to put it closer to the, not because of like, the, it's not as smooth like rolling as the uh, Endorphin Pro, but the Audios Pro 2 doesn't have as much of a sink. It has a, a bit of a bounce, more bounce for sure, and a more softer nature to it. Um, but you can really you know, you don't sink as much into the heel, which was helpful for me. Um, and I think the, and people get mad at us for continuing to talk about this shoe, but Deviate Nitro Elite is like really soft and bouncy, 
but it also I did... forgot to add it into my spectrum. I ran out of fingers. And I would so put, I would it... put that under the meta speed, but over the audios in that. Yep, and I agree. In that lineup, I'd say the difference in there is that the um, the Deviate Nitro Elite doesn't sink in the heel as much as like some of those other ones. It just has this. It's also very smooth. More of the most natural running one for me, but uh, for sure. Anyway, yeah, I, I would agree with you, David. I thought that order was really good. Cool. All right. Last question on the Audios Pro 2. And that is just an observation we've been seeing among the elites. And so when you, you know, when we're seeing results of these major marathons or half marathons, we're seeing a number of elites. I haven't calculated the actual, actual percentage, but uh, we've seen a number of them still wearing the Audios Pro version one and choosing that over version two. Also, before we go into this question, what is, <laughs> you guys always are just like holding up shoes, you know, like I'm asking a question. It's just like this shoe, this shoe, this shoe. What What's going through your heads as you hold up random shoes? I, I can't speak to David. I'm just trying to do the visual. I know people that are listening to this have no idea what we're doing, except probably some background noise, but I don't know. <laughs> well, no, but it's shoes that aren't even like okay, related. I, I don't, I don't <laughs> usually do that. So that's all on David. David, you have to explain that. What's that? What's that? Are you just trying to? No, use... I'm kidding. I, I was listening. I promise. <laughs> Actually, the Rebellion probably has a place on that lineup for some. Yeah, but um, no. I mean, they've all been related. They're all carbon plated racing shoes. <laughs> the mock you held up. <laughs> and that, that was after he started bringing okay, that fine. up. Okay, so fair enough. To be fair. So you're holding up. I, I mean, a lot of times, I so what I do before the show, I have basically a few different shoes laid out on both sides of me. Yes. Uh, for, the, for, the, for the purpose of discussion. Got it. And so when we say those shoes in the spectrum, I had that ready to roll because I knew that question was going to come up at some point. Yes. And we don't, we don't, we didn't write this out. Like I just knew that at some point we're going to talk about softness or, yeah. you know, responsiveness or something. Uh, I also just have a lot of shoes around me in general under my bed. So I didn't know this if is the my, my table is the bed. So I didn't know. like, if you guys want to see a nice sock in your hurricane, I got one right here. So um, <laughs> just happened to see it. I didn't know if the goal is to distract me as I'm asking a question. I feel like that's part of it. No, there was every once in a while, I'll try to troll you. But <laughs> <laughs> me pulling this earlier, uh, me pulling this out was totally an attempt to distract and see how you'd react. I was waiting. <laughs> It's all, it all works. I don't think you noticed, but earlier, for like about 20 seconds, I was copying your movements with the Audios Pro. <laughs> I did, not, just like, yeah, I thought, did yeah. not notice that. <laughs> all right, oh, back to the wow. question, but, right? <laughs> so, yeah, why do you guys think we're seeing, and I haven't ran in version one, you guys have, at least in a, kind a of. pre-production model. Uh, kind of. It's a pre-production. Yeah. I, I do but have anyway, to, a friend of mine let me try on his version. He had the Dream Mile um, colorway. Nathan, I know you haven't tried this. David, it felt felt totally the foam felt totally different. Um, it felt a little bit more similar to version two, but still not quite. So, Nathan, I think to answer your question, I think a lot of people still have them. I think the Audios Pro Two is still new enough that you know some athletes may not have the newest one. Um, and I think some people are still going to wear run well in it. The Audios Pro One and the Audios Pro Two are different shoes. The midsole, the geometry is very different. The foams, even though it is Light Strike Pro, they feel different, whether it's pre-production or the actual production models. The foams feel different. So I think they're going to work differently for different people. Different people are going to do better in one versus the other. Um, I found version one to be a little bit heavier despite the measured weight. Um, so some people, if they want maybe a little bit more shoe, um, this one also felt more How stable is... to me um, compared to version, version two. One, version, version one. Yeah, more version stable. one, just the way the setup, the lateral bevel is still there, but there's no cutouts. Okay. And yeah, just the, the upper, I like a little bit more on version one. This feels more trainer-esque. I will say, I you said you never felt the cutout. I did feel the cutout a little bit, especially when you're a little more fatigued. Yeah. So I'm also wondering if that more full contact feel, maybe some people prefer that yeah, over yeah. the cutout. I don't know. Hard to say. I don't, I don't think one's yeah. better than the other one. I think it comes back to that same thing we were just talking about, referencing Dustin's study that, you know, Dust studies that some people are going to do a little bit better in one versus the other. And whether it's personal comfort, 
who knows? I mean, even not too long ago before all of this stuff, there were lots of people sponsored by Adidas that were running in the Boston for marathons instead of the Adios. So I think it just depends on which one people feel more comfortable in and which one's going to get them through the full distance. Which one's faster is, is a different question. Which one's going to get mm-hmm. you through the full dif- distance is a, is a totally different topic. So I think some people might find one more comfortable than the other one. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I think, I, I think it would be, it'd be curious. I'd be curious to run in the first version. I think that just some of the nature of having a little less bias to it with the cutout um, would be a very interesting change in how the shoe feels. And if it feels as much of kind of that lateral bias falling off, or if it doesn't as much, I, I'd be curious to run in it. Um, but I feel like they're, they're different enough that it's kind of akin to like people who like alpha fly and people who like vapor fly. And I'm curious kind of what direction, just because their elites are choosing the original version, if they'll decide to go a little bit of that route at Adidas where they'll have kind of two of these, you know, elite designed marathon racing shoes. A bit curious to see. David, do you have any thoughts on it? About just why, why people are choosing one. Maybe just that cut. Like, I don't know. I feel like the four foot traction on this is actually pretty good and it's pretty wide and you get a nice, like kind of grippy pulley sensation. The only thing I can really think of is maybe when they're transitioning, like let's say someone's a little bit more in that four foot and they don't really, this doesn't really matter a whole lot. They're pretty much here and forward anyways. And they might choose this one over the other one, whereas someone might be a little bit harsher on the heel and maybe they're a little sensitive to this region and they like the original because of more of a full contact type feel. I, I don't know. I mean, because I, I didn't run in the previous version, so I don't. I can't compare apples to apples. Right. I can only speculate. Same. And who knows? It could just be upper lockdown. I really like Seller Mesh v- uh, version one in the Addy Zero Pro, in the Takumi Sen 7, in the RC2. The original seller mesh, I actually like that seller mesh better than this seller mesh. Yeah. Would that be enough for me to choose the shoe over it? I don't know. I'd have to have it on my foot. But I mean, the that's, original seller mesh is nice. That's why I chose. Not that this isn't. That's but. why I chose the Endorphin Pro Two. Yeah. Over the Endorphin Pro Plus for my marathon it was the upper. So definitely. So. Yeah. So who knows? Maybe it could just even just be an upper because this is a change in upper too. It's a, yeah. it's a it's drastic. It's still seller mesh, but it's different. It's a drastic yeah. change. I, I, to be honest, I like the original seller mesh. Yeah. Do I have? I think I have my RC two around here. Let me I, see. I the upper was one of my favorite parts of the original. Where I love the fact that on the lateral side yeah. there were additional oh, eyelets, and you could actually I've done, messed with this a little bit. You can adjust the fitting almost any way you want. Um, yeah. and I, for patients, Just I do that all the time. I, I, for the, for patients, I, I, they know, if they know me, if I've been working with them, I adjust lacing all the time. And so the original was really good. This upper is probably one of my mm-hmm. favorites. The other one is more aggressive. Version two is more aggressive. It, it hugs the cl- foot closer. Um, if you lock it down, but yeah, there's just, it's, they're two different yeah. shoes and are going to work better. I would say that people. too. The Seller Mesh version one is a little bit more structured. It's almost got this little lattice that runs through the whole thing Mm -hmm. with like, I don't know if it's like laser cut or what, but it's, it just kind of holds that upper in place. Whereas you can even see it. Like if I hold this shoe here, it stays and keeps its shape. And if I do this one, it kind of collapses on itself, just the weight of it. So I don't know if that small little difference would be enough to make someone choose V1 over V2. I don't know. Right. I'd have to have it on my foot to to make that decision, but I, I, that could be another potential reason. Just me speculating. Also, some of the colors of V1 are awesome. Maybe that's why. Dude, this, yeah, this doesn't help, but I've been hunting. Those, they got some sweet colorways. I've been hunting on eBay for size nine and nine and a half, and I keep getting outbid at the last second. <laughs> so I have tried multiple <laughs> times. So to any people well, maybe, out there who have outbid me, you guys suck. I'm trying to get my my <laughs> co-writers some original shoes here. <laughs> That's hilarious. Awesome. Well, there's our there's our team review, our video review on the Adios Pro 2. If you guys have any questions or anything we said was confusing uh, or just you want some clarity somewhere, uh, just drop those questions below on the YouTube video or, again, reach out to us on one of those platforms.